Today's New Testament reading is the second epistle to the Corinthians, the first and second chapters. But I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. For I made up my mind not to make another painful visit to you. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I felt sure of all of you that my joy would be the joy of you all. For I wrote to you out of much affliction and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. Now if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but in some measure, not to put it too severely, to all of you. For such a one, this punishment by the majority is enough. So you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him, or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I beg you to reaffirm your love for him. For this is why I wrote that I might test you and know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. When I came to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ, Even though a door was open for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there, so I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Chad Philip. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Discipline. Just saying the word brings back memories of my childhood when I was disobedient to my parents or fighting with my brothers, and, well, my parents had to discipline me. Also brings back memories as a parent of when my children were disobedient and I had to discipline them. Sinners, each and every one of us, Christians, and still sinners. The life of a Christian is a life of repentance. Each and every day, we sin. We disobey our parents and others in authority. We gossip about our neighbor, or we covet our neighbor's possessions. We look at other people and think we are better than them. God's law shows us our sin and condemns us. Each and every day, we are called to repent our sins. That is why Martin Luther wrote in his evening prayer, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong. We repent our sins, and God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The life of a Christian is a life of repentance and a life of forgiveness. But what is to be done with the Christian who refuses to repent? whose sin has been brought before them, and they refuse to repent. That is what happened in the Corinthian church. In Paul's first letter to Corinth, he writes that it has been reported to him that there is sexual immorality in the congregation, and that the individual is not repenting. To make matters worse, the congregation is doing nothing to stop it. 
Paul tells the congregation to discipline this individual. The final step of church discipline is excommunication to remove a member from the church. Paul tells the Corinthians to remove this individual from the church, to hand him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Church discipline is not done out of anger or malice or vengeance, but out of love, love for the soul of a fellow Christian. This man is an unrepentant sinner, an unbeliever, who was on his way to eternal damnation if he did not repent. According to our text this morning, the church's discipline had the desired effect. The man repented. Now what? Forgive him. The church's discipline has worked. The purpose of discipline is not to punish, but correct. Not to drive out, but to win back. Not to turn someone away from God, but to turn them back to God. This man had grieved Paul and the congregation. Now he was grieving overwhelmed by excessive sorrow to the point that he may even despair God's forgiveness, that he may be forever turned away from God. A sinner who has been crushed by the law and the realization of their sin does not need more law. They need to have the gospel delivered to them. Christ's death on the cross won forgiveness for this man's sin. God has forgiven him, and now his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ should speak that forgiveness to him. And when they forgive him, Paul will also forgive him. They need to comfort him as they welcome him back into the body of Christ so that they do not lose him to Satan. We deliver Christ's forgiveness to those who are sorrowful over their sins. It is not easy to discipline people. But may God grant us the strength to love our brothers and sisters in Christ even when we have to discipline them, to admonish them in love. And may God keep us humble as repentant sinners who are forgiven in Jesus Christ.